Hey guys, hope you all had a good week. This is a secondhand Samsung RV511. This is quite an old laptop. It's an i3 and it would have come with Windows 7, but it's part of one of the secondhand batches that I got. Um, I obviously don't really need this working for any purpose at all, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take out the board and just have a quick run through it, just, um, just to see if we can learn anything from it. So let me take out the board, I'll take some pictures and I'll see you back on the screen. So this is what the motherboard looks like. Uh, I've imported it into Photoshop and I've used a little touch of overlay on this just to bring out the colors a bit more. I think I'm gonna do that in future. So my first issue with this is how am I going to power it because I don't have a power adapter with this. So it might be useful just to go through how I go about powering this. This is the DC connection, the DC jack right over here in the corner. So I'm gonna zoom into that and we're gonna get a look at it. picture came out quite well but it's this section here so when we move up a little bit got us quite a bit of dirt on this isn't it there looks like there's only two pins on this so this pin is obviously going to our ground point right here so we know if we want to inject voltage then we just connect our black wire to this point this here should look familiar to anybody who's looked at other videos with me uh, we have two inductors, so this is most likely the positive line. So let's zoom out a little bit and follow where that pad goes. So does anything about this look familiar to you? So on this path, wherever it is, because we don't know what it is right now, it hits two inductors, comes along this path right here, and hits what looks like a MOSFET then a second MOSFET and this large resistor right here so could you hazard a guess as to what that might be well this looks like our positive voltage line in right here so I'm thinking this is where we inject our voltage so the question is we know that most of the laptops we've dealt with are anywhere between oh, 15, 19, 20 volts for the Lenovo's but where are we going to find out what the value is that we need to inject into this? Well, I've taken a picture of the sticker on the back of it. If we zoom in just a little bit on this, we can see quite clearly here that the input for this model is 19 volts, 3.16 amp. So what we need to do is we need to inject 19 volts onto this motherboard. We don't need to worry about the current because the motherboard will draw as much as it needs. Uh, obviously if there's a short we then need to worry about the current but I've checked this motherboard already and there isn't a short on it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to inject 19 volts and I'm going to connect my red wire here for our positive and I'm going to connect my black wire here and I'm going to show you that next. So just to reiterate, I don't have the original power adapter for this laptop. So what I'm going to do is power it with my desktop DC power supply. And this is the desktop power supply that I have. So as we worked out, this is ground right here. So we need to connect our black jumper wire to ground. And I've, I just solder that in. And we connect our positive red wire to this point here. So let me show you what that looks like okay and I then set 19 volts on the power supply most of the adapters are a little bit more than 19 volts so I've just put 19.3 volts on that and when I did that it draws 0 0.006 amps that's 6 milliamps I haven't set a limit on this you only really need to set a current limit when you're injecting voltage to find a short the laptop will draw as much current as it needs so with the laptop powered off it's only drawing 0 0.006 amps, which is 6 milliamps. So now that we've got the laptop successfully powered, I'm going to follow this and take some measurements. So we're coming in here, down to here, and then down to our two MOSFETs. Okay, so once again, we're going to use our digital multimeter in the 20 volt range and I'm going to place my black probe to ground and the ground that I find is here so place my black probe to ground 
volts DC in the 20 volt range and let's start taking some measurements. As you can see I've moved my black probe onto this ground right here. Uh, it just helps me to zoom in more easily on the MOSFET so we can see them. Uh, you can't actually see the model number of the MOSFETs on this. I didn't do a great job of taking the pictures. I cleaned it off but there is some residue left on it and it's just not possible to see. So I'm going to clean it off a bit better and take photos and just find out exactly what they are. But the first thing that we want to do obviously is just make sure that we have our 19.3 volts coming to this point here. So I place my probe on this pin of the MOSFET and I measure 19.3 volts there. So that is our first voltage entering our first MOSFET. We've seen quite a few of these MOSFETs, so it should be possible at this stage by the pin configuration to recognize which pin is which. So just have a look at that there and see if you can work it out for yourself. Okay, well we've one pin that's out on its own and has a separate connection here, so what's that likely to be? Well, because we've three pins connected here and four pins connected here, they're likely to be the ones carrying the current. So this one on its own is the gate. And where we have a gate, it's usually gate, source, source, source. So these are most likely to be the source pins and then the four drain pins are usually together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this off, find out what the model number of it is, get the data sheet and have a quick look. Okay, so I cleaned off both of the MOSFETs and I've identified that both are actually the same A04419 MOSFET. So this is a 30 volt P-channel MOSFET. And if you look down, you will see that the configuration is as I suspected. So we have the four drain pins together on one side of this MOSFET. We have three source pins together and then we have our gate pin, which is the pin that I identified as being on its own. Now this is a P-channel MOSFET, so P-channel MOSFETs are switched on when the voltage on the gate is low. So what I did was I mapped out the pins on these and I just stuck on the model number also. So this is the AON4419 and this too. Now these are back to back so the drain pins are all connected together. So this is the AC FET usually in these configurations that controls the voltage coming in and this is the RB FET, the reverse blocking FET which uh, prevents the battery voltage coming back the opposite direction. So what I wanted to check next was we've established that there's 19.3 volts on the source pins of this MOSFET but I wanted to check the gate pin. So when I measured here I found that there was 9.5 volts on it. Now this is significantly lower than the 19.3 so I expect this MOSFET to be turned on with that gate voltage and when I checked the drain pins on the other side I found that there was indeed 19.3 volts at this section. Next I checked the drain pins of the second MOSFET and just confirmed that our 19.3 volts is also present here. And when I place my probe there with the multimeter I find that there is 19.3 volts on the drain pins of the second MOSFET also. This is also a 30 volt P-channel MOSFET so the expectation here would be that if the gate is low that our 19.3 volts comes through from our drain pins and onto our source pins. So I place my probe onto the gate pin and I find that there is 2.5 volts here and when I check the voltage that's on the source pins I find that our 19.3 volt is making it through to here. The last component on the input section here is this current sense resistor. This is marked as R033. That's actually the value of the resistor itself. You swap in a decimal point instead of the R, which makes it 0.033 ohms. So what we need to do is make sure that our 19.3 volts is present on the other side of this. There will be a very small voltage drop across this resistor. It's almost negligible. So we will expect to find 19.3 volts on the other side of this. And when I place my probe here, I measure 19.3 volts on the multimeter. Okay, so up to this point we have... Okay, we have input 19.3 volts onto the motherboard at this section here because we had no power adapter. I have followed that 19.3 volts 
through our two input MOSFETs and through our current sense resistor and I've found that my 19.3 volts main power rail is working. That brings me to the reason that I chose to do a video on this motherboard. This is the ISL6255. Can you have a guess as to what that might be? Well that is an ISL6255 highly integrated battery charger with automatic power source selector for notebook computers. So that's the power management I see. So what I wanted to do at some stage was to make a video on the power management I see and what, I, what I'm going to try and do is go down through this pin by pin and work out what each one of the pins does. This motherboard is particularly good for doing that type of video because it is physically located right beside the current sense resistor and the input. On a lot of the other laptops that I've been doing on the channel it's been on the other side of the board or far away from the current sense resistor here and it's just convenient for you know describing what everything does to have these components close together. So I'm going to leave that for this week and what I'm going to do next week is take a much more in-depth look at the power management IC so that we all get a better understanding. Thanks for all the comments over the last couple of weeks. Uh, been very nice reading back on them. Just going to try and keep growing the channel. And if you have anything to say, just post it below any comments or suggestions. And I'll be back with a description of this power management I see next week.